So if you either remember or go back and watch my, my previous version of this video, my, my reading goals and plans for 2021, you're gonna see I had it like super structured. I was like, all right, we're gonna have these big series and we're gonna have these small series and we're gonna alternate, like book from big series, book from small series. We're gonna plan our rereads. I was very, I was a creature of order. I was planned. Uh, in, for this one, chaos is going to reign just a little bit more. So, uh, if you go to my Goodreads, you can see there is a shelf which is planned for 2021. And you can see I did a pretty good job. Uh, I did not, most of the things I didn't do from that are rereads. I did not reread all of The Wheel of Time. I didn't reread Mistborn and Stormlight. Uh, those are really the main ones. There's also some new series that I was hoping to finish that I didn't. Like, my, my goal was actually to finish The Black Company when I kind of started it late, partially because people had me less excited for it, which I should have ignored because it's great. And the other is that I was hoping to finish Dune, but I, I just I ended up reading other stuff. I had something had to move for the all the added, like, Guy Gavriel K and Christopher Rocchio stuff. But overall, in terms of which books I read... I did, I did pretty well. Like, I didn't do perfectly, but I think I, I wasn't expecting to do perfectly. I did about as well as I could expect, and I read exactly the amount of books I intended to read. Uh, well, technically, that's not true. Goodreads says I read 78 books, which was exactly my reading goal. I actually read 79 books. Just one isn't a published book. It's a novel by a family member that doesn't exist on Goodreads. So, I did read 79 books, so I think I did pretty well. I also had five five-star predictions, which I did okay on. Obviously, in hindsight, the best approach to the five-star predictions would be to just name a bunch of Robin Hobb books. And so also there, I, I was trying to predict books that I would give 9.5 out of 10 or higher. So, and I was kind of didn't want to just go ham on one author. So it would have been kind of hard because other than Robin Hobb books, I had three books that I gave 9.5 or higher. And two of them were books I didn't actually plan to read. So that was kind of hard. But in general, the books I predicted for five stars were pretty good. I did predict Assassin's Fate, which is my favorite book of all time now. So I did that. I predicted The Crippled God, which I did not give 9.5 out of 10, but was very close. I predicted The Shadow of the Gods, which, if I'm being completely honest, didn't end up being that close to being five stars. Uh, I predicted The Blackest Heart by Brian Lee Durfee, which was not a bad prediction. I really enjoyed The Blackest Heart. It did not get five stars. I think I gave it like an 8.8 .8 out of 10. And my final five-star prediction was Jade War by Fonda Lee, which once again did not get 9.5 out of 10, but was a book I really enjoyed. I gave it like a 9.1. If Jade Legacy didn't exist, it would be on my top 10 list. That will should be uh, the video I make after this one for, for the year. So Overall, I haven't calculated it, but I'm going to make editing me do it. The average score for my five-star predictions was this, which I'm guessing should be pretty high. So I think I did kind of okay, but on the other hand, I, I was one for five. So I'm going to try and do better this year. I'm going to try and be better than one for five. Uh, there are there are quite a few books that I, I think are decent picks, so I think I have a better chance of getting more than that. And, you know, obviously, in hindsight... But the thing is, I, I didn't know I was going to like Robin Hobb as much as I did. But in hindsight, I like, the best strategy would have just been, like, name a bunch of books from Erickson and Hobb and uh, would have gotten, like, Toll the Hounds. And I mean, I wouldn't have named one of the Rainwilds books, and I don't see why I would name Golden Fool, so I would have gotten Robin Hobb, because all the other Robin Hobb books I read were five stars. Anyways, that is basically it for reflecting... On my 2021 video, I did, I did pretty well at predicting what I do. So let us get into the plans for 2022. The first thing I'm gonna start with that I think is kind of gonna be like the heart of my reading year is I will be reading one book by Mr. Guy Gavril K, who at this point is already one of my favorite authors. I've read five books by them, and I think all five have been pretty damn great. And three of those are supposed to be among his weakest books. So I will, I'm not going to be rereading. So I will be going in publication order, skipping Tigana and the Lines of Alversant. 
And also, when his new book comes out, All the Seas of the World, I'm just going to read that when it comes out. Um, because, I don't know, new book shiny. Uh, these, I'm really excited for a lot of these. His more historical-based books. Uh, there was a random review for The Darkest Road that was like, Guy Gavril K got his Tolkien out of his system so he could go write better stuff. Obviously, I've only read two of his like historical setting-based books, and... I thought they were both incredible. In terms of, like, pure prose and writing, Guy Gavroke may be my favorite author. It's kind of a coin toss between him and Hobb. And then I think the rest of his stuff is really solid. He does tend to, from the books I've read, he usually has something really, like, random and kind of weird somewhere, like, in the middle of the book that it's going to depend who you are on whether you just go, like, what, this is dumb, or you're just like, whatever, it's really well written, I'm just going to enjoy it. I, so far, have tended to be the second one. Uh, I Maybe he he gets a little bit less horny for some of the books. I don't mind it that much, but it's, it's a bit much. But that's kind of going to be the main part of my reading year. I'm probably going to have a couple five-star predictions from that. I'm going to make five again this year, and I'm going to try and do better than one out of five. That's going to be like an entire year-long thing. Another thing I'm going to be doing uh, one book a month for, but it's only three books, is... Uh, the book I've started, which is Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn by Tad Williams, which I'll be doing uh, this in January, obviously, because I'm reading it now. Uh, but I'm, on I'm only on the page, like, 20. Uh, Stones of Farewell in February. And Two Green Angel Tower, the 520,000-word monstrosity. Get good Stormlight books. You're basically short stories. Uh, in March. I'm not going to be splitting it. I'm just going to read it in March. If you are interested in doing that, there is a like read along. There's a group read. There's a bunch of people reading it in Mike Book Reviews Discord. There's just a Dragon Bone chair chat. We're having a good time. Uh, yeah, looking forward to that. There's a lot of other small series that, that I'm going to go through. I have one other thing that I have planned to do with someone else, and that is I will be reading Fire and Blood by George R. R. Martin, which I have never read, but I am, I do like the Targaryen stuff, and I'm really in the mood to read some George R. R. Martin. I'm gonna get into what I'm gonna do for rereads this year, but I think I might just reread A Song of Ice and Fire. I've been saying I'm not gonna reread it until Winds of Winter has a release date, but you know what? I want to, largely just because I think I'll like it way more. I think my preferences as a reader has changed a lot since I last read A Song of Ice and Fire, and it's moved towards, well, it's become more broad. It's not that I don't like the books I used to like, it's now I also like the more A Song of Ice and Fire style books. The, like, you know, more based on history, more kind of gritty setting, with kind of more, like, uh, you know, fancier prose. So, I'm, I, re I might just end up rereading Song of Ice and Fire, and I'm doing this in March with Shake, who has a channel that I will link below. I'm not going to promise you regular uploads, but the things you do upload uh, are pretty good. And that's about all I have planned, like really strictly. I will note, uh, in the past, I've been kind of... Because I've kind of kept more to my TBR, when a buddy read came up, I've kind of been like, well, I'm not going to jump that to the top of my TBR. I want to do more collaborations this year. I've only done a couple collaborations, and all the ones I've done have been super fun. I had the Dresden one with Chase. I had one on the Fantasy Network with Jimmy Nuts. I had a Best Serve Cold one on Bookborn's channel, where I had to be the mean person. Um, and and I also had a, a the Final Empire one. But I want to do more. Uh, they're really fun, so... Uh, this year, I'm going to be taking, you know, if multiple people are doing, like, like a read of something and they're going to do a co collaboration, I'm just going to say, screw the TBR and jump it to the top of the list, just because I think I'll have more fun that way, and, you know, we'll let chaos reign. That's okay. That's fine. And next, there are uh, four series that I caught up on or started in 2021 that I will be making a priority to kind of, you know, continue very, very early on in 2021. These will be books that are on my immediate TBR. And the first of which is uh, the rest of the Hyperion series. Next time I go to a bookstore, I will be looking for Fall of Hyperion. And the, the other two, I forget what they're called. And if they don't have them, I will be ordering those books. Hyperion was incredible. 
Uh, it was, I said, I found it maybe somewhat uneven, but holy crap, Dan Simmons can write. Now, The Scholar's Tale is just one of the best things that I've ever read. And I mean that, like, if you isolated The Scholar's Tale and just had, like, how good is just this section, it literally might be, like, my favorite fictional 60-page stretch. It would maybe lose out to, like, the last 60 pages of Assassin's Fate, but it would be, like, top five 60-page stretches in fiction. I think The Scholar's Tale is basically a 10 out of 10. The second half of The Priest's Tale is effectively perfect. I want to read more Dan Simmons. I think he's an amazing author. His his world building, his command of character voice, his ability to evoke emotion is all incredible. Um, and the next one is uh, The Black Company. I definitely I want to finish this little set of three. Uh, I've just finished Shadows Linger last night. Uh, not technically this morning, but only barely. It was just after midnight. Uh, and I'll be trying to read The White Rose fairly quickly. Uh, Alan mentioned on Discord, he, we might do like a spoiler talk for the first three. Uh, the Black Company, Shadows Linger, and White Rose. I'm really enjoying The Black Company, so I definitely will be continuing this. The next one is Senlin, or The Books of Babel by Josiah Bancroft. I Same thing as Hyperion. Next time I'm in a bookstore, I will be looking for the rest of these books. And if that bookstore does not have them, I will be ordering them. I thought Senlin was an extraordinarily solid book. I basically liked all the aspects of it. I think the setting is fascinating. The entire idea of like a tower with all these rings and each ring is like a distinct, uniquely corrupt society. Just overall an extraordinarily solid book. I don't really have that much to complain about it. I wouldn't say it blew my socks off, but I've also heard that The Arm of the Sphinx and The Hod King are both better than this book. And then I've heard mixed things about The Fall of Babel, but we'll see when we get there. Uh, one I read a long time ago, because I was waiting for the paperback to come out, because I didn't want to buy the hardback, is Shorefall by Robert Jackson Bennett, one I do plan to get to. I read Foundryside pretty early in the year. Foundryside I did not think was an exceptional read, but it was never a boring read. It was definitely... I Actually, I need a fast-paced read in between finishing the Dragonbone Chair and then I'll probably be doing a Guy Gavril K book. So I actually might do this before the others just because I kind of want something that's very fast-paced with very straightforward prose to split those apart uh, just because of how like similar the writing styles are and I don't want to get like tired of that style. So I actually might be reading I Just Remembered I Had Shorefall. Thanks, Shailen. Got me for it for Christmas. Very nice. Um, so I actually might be reading this effectively right away uh, right after the Dragonbone Chair, as a slightly more straightforward book. If you like specifically the style of story of the Cosmere, I I think found, you'll probably like Foundryside. Um, it it never got boring and it was extremely fast. Uh, there are other series that I have ongoing that I'm just not super in the mood to continue right now. And I think if I read right now, I would probably go in with the wrong mindset. I know if I wait, I eventually will rehype myself up for it and we'll go back into it. And those are primarily uh, His Dark Materials and Dune. I do own the continuations of both. I am obviously, I'm not DNFing them. I am going to finish them. I'll probably finish, catch up to them in 2022. It just won't be early in 2022. And I'll kind of just get to them when I feel like getting to them. But then I also have a lot of series I haven't started. And I own, on this bookshelf, the one you can't see, I own a lot of first books of series. And then I actually have an overflow shelf, roughly that way, that has more first books in series that I haven't read. And I am going to prioritize the series I own. I'm going to try and not start a series that I have to buy book one for unless there's some kind of like YouTube collaboration for it. So I now have three uh, pretty large stacks of books that I have split into three sections. I've split into books I will absolutely read in 2022. You can bet on it. Your money will be safe. There are books that I might read in 2022 because I'm going to read all the ones I'm saying I definitely will read. I then, which of these ones I read will just depend on which one I feel like reading. And then I have uh, a bunch of books that, a bunch of series, I have standalones here as well that I'm almost certainly not going to read in 2022. The only way they get read is like, if everyone I know reads them and says they're amazing, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but they are books I own. And also keep in mind, there's the books I already talked about in the video, new releases that can come out. And 
I don't have self-control when it comes to buying books, so there's an excellent chance I'll buy more books, and some of them will leapfrog what I already have here. So let's start with the books I definitely will read, of which I don't have 24, but if you take the size of all the series for these books, it adds up to 24 books. And the first one I have here is, this is how you lose the time war. And I have this here because my sister got me this for Christmas, and I got her this is how you lose the time war for Christmas. We got each other the same book. So we're both going to read it uh, probably uh, pretty early in the year. I just love this blurb, by the way. Holy shit, this was so good. Nice. Um, that's the first time I saw that. I haven't actually really looked at it since I got it. But I'm going to read this because I'm going to read it with my sister. Um, another book I am definitely going to read is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemsen, which is, of course, a trilogy, the Broken Earth trilogy. I will be reading... Uh, I'm not going to... I'll almost certainly be reading the entire trilogy. I'll almost certainly be reading not just the books I own for this part, but the entire series. Obviously, I may DNF some, but I'm not expecting to DNF this. I know... I've heard a lot of really good things. This is a somewhat divisive book. Uh, it was just recently on Jimmy Nuts, the Fantasy Network's like top 10 books of the year, and he had a ridiculous year, so that was that was tough competition, and it beat out. I think it, it he had it above like the Wisdom of Crowds. I'm trying to remember if he, I don't think he had it above Two Green Angel Tower, uh, but he had it high. Like he really liked this book. Uh, I've heard it. There's really nothing else like it, and this is also one that's going to be. Most of these are going to be somewhat early in the year. There's 24 of them, so there's probably some that'll be later, but I will definitely be reading all of these. The Shadow of What Was Lost, the Lycanius Trilogy by James Islington. Uh, there's some people who are constantly saying, like, this is amazing, and the best trilogy, and, like, the best ending to a trilogy. And then there are people who tell me it's totally mediocre. Well, I'm going to read and see what I think. Um, I've heard it's very kind of Sanderson Jordan-esque. Um, funnily enough, I... I've actually basically not seen the people who dislike it. Uh, I haven't seen any of them say that it's a Wheel of Time ripoff. I have seen people who like it compare it to the Wheel of Time a lot, but say like with less fluff, which uh, I think Patrick said that and tilted everyone, of which I was one of the people. I'm going to read this. I've heard it's got an extremely fancy, really clever magic system. We'll see how that goes. The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. I don't know if Gazzy is watching this video, but uh, the my fellow moderator in Daniel Green's Discord, uh, I think this is her favorite book of all time, and she's peer pressured about half the server into reading it, and I will be included in that. Uh, I have she I have jokingly, well, not jokingly, it's a real thing, but it's not going to happen, said that if this is if uh, my book of the year, I'll send her a book of her choice within reason. I'm not going to send her a like Sanderson Leatherbound or something, but I have heard very good things about this. I'm not expecting it to be my book of the year, but I am expecting to like it quite a bit, and who knows, maybe Gazzy will be right, and it will shock me and be my book of the year, or my favorite book of all time. Probably not, though. American Gods by Neil Gaiman, this thick boy, which is an urban fantasy. I've never read any Neil Gaiman, and, well, I'm going to read this, so uh, later this year I will have read Neil Gaiman, I've kind of no, don't really know that much to expect of this. Uh, the concerns I've heard is people finding the protagonist uninteresting, but the actual like story and the writing being fantastic. We shall see. Next up, I will be reading for sure The Long Price Quartet by Daniel Abrahams. Yes, Alan, if he's watching this, just got happy. He was also probably happy when I said he, I would finish Sendlin. But I will also be reading this. I'm excited to start some Daniel Abrahams. I've heard it has some really, like, long-term character studies. I'm going to be completely honest. From Sarah Reed's review, this just sounds like... It sounds so Hob-like. And this makes me excited and happy. It sounds like, you know, really relationship-focused, slow-burn character study over a long period of time. It sounds like, basically, sh a shorter shorter Robin Hobb. Just Realm of the Elderlings, but shorter, which I am totally excited for. One that isn't really a new series, but I'm counting it anyways because it's kind of a new series. Um, I will... Ah, actually, I shouldn't have this in the for sure. I put this in the for sure without thinking, 
This actually, it depends on what I'm going to wait for there to be a release date. I'm going to mention it now, but this one actually is not as certain as the others. This should be in the might read. In fact, I'm going to, I'll change. Uh, so actually 22 books in this section, which is uh, Dark Age by Pierce Brown, the second Red Rising trilogy. I think it's unlikely I'm going to want to reread everything. So I don't want to read these two books way before book three comes out. Uh, so I'm going to wait for there to be a book three release date and try and time it. So I finished Dark Age a little bit before Lightbringer. I have not forgotten about you Red Rising fans. I did very much enjoy the Red Rising trilogy. It's not like one of my favorite trilogies ever, but uh, I thought, especially the last two books, I enjoyed quite a bit. Uh, especially, also, um, there are a lot of people who are like, oh, POVs that aren't Darrow. Well, one, I've heard Darrow gets way more interesting in this trilogy. And two... As you'll know if you watch my Red Rising review, I'm totally okay with having non-Darrow POVs. I think Darrow was one of the less interesting characters in the first trilogy. I thought it was the side cast that made it. For those of you who are good at math, you might be like, Hey Jake, you are really far from 24 books at this point. Um, you're, you're not close. And yet I only have one more book here. And that is The Expanse by James S.A. Corey, which is actually two people. It's Daniel Abrams and something else. I'm sorry, other person. I am forgetting who you are. Um, crap, who's the second person? This is embarrassing. I'm, whatever. Sorry, person who isn't Daniel Abrams. Who was the other person who wrote this? Whatever. They chose to make it by James S.A. Corey, so I'm referring to the entity that wrote this book as James S.A. Corey. This is obviously a nine-book series, and the books are not short, but uh, is one I definitely want to get through this year. It's, I think, the biggest series that I'm definitely going to read this year. It's kind of, it's got to fill the some big shoes of Realm of the Elderlings and Malazan, which were the, my big series for 2021. But uh, I have heard very good things about it. I'm expecting, I, I know it's sci-fi. I think it's set mostly around our solar system. It's lots of, like, politics. Uh, it's technology that feels believable without actually going to the nitty gritty sounds pretty damn good so those are the well now because i'm removing these 22 books that i will read in 2022 these are books you can count on they will be in wrap-ups at some point uh but there's a larger stack of 50 which actually is 52 books because it includes this that are books i might read and let's get into those. Next up, we have the more numerous list, and these are books that I might read. And this is going to depend on which I'm in the mood to read. After I am done, or some, some of these might get read, like all of these that I read aren't going to be read after all the ones I said I definitely will read. But these are ones that I'm not going to pick out which I'm going to for sure read. I will, if I'm going to read something from this pile, I'll pick the one I feel like reading. And this is the most numerous pile. All the books of all the series adds up to, I think, 52 books. Uh, and I'm not going to hold up the Dark Age trilogy, which is I'm counting as two books because the third one isn't out yet um, because I already talked about it. But the first book I have here is The Martian by Andy Weir. I have not read The Martian. I will say uh, this year I did read Project Hail Mary, which is fantastic. Uh... I'm expecting this to be somewhat similar to Project Hail Mary. I have heard it is. Project Hail Mary is going to be pretty high on my top 10 book list for that is going to be my next video. So I definitely want to read this at some point soon, but I just don't know if I'm absolutely for sure going to read it. This is probably one of the ones on this list that's more likely than the others. But if I'm in the root mood for some funny Space MacGyver, then uh, The Martian it is. Uh, another sci-fi that I might read is We Are Legion, We Are Bob. Uh, I'm going to read this just if I want something that sounds really fun. It's short. Uh, the premise just sounds like a good time. Or if, you know, if I'm in the mood for some more sci-fi. Uh, but I think I'll probably like it. This is not one where even like the people who really like it, this isn't one that I expect to contend for like my favorite series. But I think it should be a series that I enjoy and have a good time with. The Princess Bride by William Goldman. I've obviously, I actually haven't read this. Inconceivable. 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 You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. I've obviously seen the movie. I've heard the book is darker than the movie. 
Uh, but I, I really, I want to read this because like, it's one of my favorite movies. It's just such a good time. It's iconic. And you know, I feel like I have to read this book. And, uh, if I don't read it in 2022, I'll definitely be reading it in 2023. Next up, we have more Daniel Abrams. We have the dragon path, which is book one to the dagger and the coin series, which I believe is five books. That's what Goodreads tells me. Uh, this one will probably depend on how much I like both uh, The Long Price Quartet and The Expanse. If I eat those up and absolutely love those, I can easily see myself straight away going into The Dagger and the Coin. If I'm not as big on those, then I might take a, a bigger break and could read this later. So this one is less dependent on mood and more just dependent on how much I like other stuff. But whatever. This is a series that I've owned for a long time. I think these are actually technically my sister's books that she just kind of left here. But it's uh, the Dark, the Shades of Magic trilogy by V.E. Schwab. This is going to depend on how much I like The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. If I love The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, I will almost certainly read these in 2022. If I am lukewarm or dislike The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, these will almost certainly not be read in 2022. So your fate lies in the hands of another, but the same author. Uh, next up, we have books that I'm probably going to just sell because I have hardcovers for the Shattered Sea trilogy by Joe Abercrombie, which I found used for $2 a piece. And I'm actually pretty sure these are really expensive hardcovers to find, and they're in pretty good shape. So I don't know if I'll read these physical hardcovers. I might sell them and just get paperbacks. But more Joe Abercrombie, obviously one of my favorite authors. This is going to be a series where if I'm in the mood to read some more Joe Abercrombie, obviously uh, we're not getting any more First Law for quite a while. I've read all the First Law that I can. And if I feel like really re reading some extremely witty, smart dialogue, some, you know, depressing state of mind about human nature and some vivid character voices, and in general just some Joe Abercrombie, then I will be reading Half a King and the rest of the Shattered Sea Trilogy. And next we have a book that I'm going, I bought for two reasons, exactly. One, I've seen some of the author, like, on Twitter, and they seem cool. And two, it just looks like Live Ship. So, you know, I like me some Live Ship, so I see a a book called The Bone Ships with a cover that really looks like the UK live ship cover art. Even the font is the same. Look at the S. Look at those two S's. They're like the same S. Um, so hopefully I don't tilt everyone and end up calling this Walmart live ship. I, it, in premise, it's actually very different from live ship. It just looks the same as live ship. But I'm, I mostly just uh, bought this book because I was like, that looks like live ship. So... Uh, you can thank R.J. Barker can thank Robin Hobb for getting R.J. Barker a sale. But this one, it isn't that they look similar. It's that I've just heard that uh, the author writes somewhat similarly to Robin Hobb, and that is The Curse of the Chalion, which is part of, I forget the name of the series. I have it written down here somewhere. World of the Five Gods, which I believe is a four book series, a quartet. And so I want to get to this, uh, probably going to... I say, like, wait for him in the mood for Robin Hobb, but on all honesty, if I'm in the mood for Robin Hobb, I'm just going to keep rereading Robin Hobb. But if I'm in the mood for something similar to Robin Hobb, I will be going into this. The Threadlight series by Zach Argyle. This is a heavy book for its size. You can tell it's self-published, just from the weight. I don't know why, but traditionally published books don't have this weight. I don't know. Anyways, uh, Zach Argyle... Um, also seems like a nice dude on Twitter. Uh, I'm not going to lie. This cover and uh, cover and name of the series makes me think it's going to be like shorter Stormlight. Um, that's just, I can't help but think that. So yeah, uh, this is the book that Bookborn just refuses to review for some reason. Can't figure out why. But I, I if I read it, will be more likely to review it. Or at least talk about it in a wrap up. But this is one, I don't know if I'm going to read it you know, depends if I'm in the mood for it. It's in the might read. It's probably more likely than a lot of the ones in this might read. I do, I, it is a series I definitely do want to get to. I think it's going to have a third book come out at some point. If there's a new release coming out, that might motivate me to read the first two. Only two books are of it are right, right now. The Raiira Revelations, which is six books, but each book is split into 
like each two vol. This is considered two books in the series. Uh, it's just in one volume, so I don't know. I mean, the thing is, like, for normal non-fantasy readers, it's because, like, this would just be too long for one book, but it's, like, 640 pages. Like, that's a totally reasonable length book. Anyways, I get to count it as six reads for my reading goal, and then I get a bigger number, and the bigger number makes me feel better about myself. So I'm going to count this as two books and count this as a six-book series uh, just because I can one that came water damaged from Amazon. I should have gotten them to replace it. But uh, Book of the New Sun by Gene Wolfe, which I think has been separated. I said I didn't want to read this in 2021 because I've heard it can be very confusing. And I was like, I read Malaz and Book of the Fallen. I've had enough confusion for a while. Give my brain a break. This book is so confusing. I'm not even sure if it's a four or five book series. Goodreads has Earth of the New Sun in the same series. But from what I've heard, it's really like four books. It's really a four book series that's actually one book that just happens to be in four volumes. See, even the format of the series is confusing. I haven't even started the book and it's already confusing. Uh, Gene Wolfe is someone I regularly see called genius where people talk about his ability to hide things just in completely plain sight, his prose and his writing being, you know, maybe just the best around. Or, and also one of the most unreliable first-person narrators ever. Someone who claimed, a torturer who claims he has a perfect memory. I've heard, like, the the plot isn't, like, super complicated, but it's just the, the protagonist we follow and the writing style that can make it, like, hard to follow and extremely dense. But we shall see. The Parable of the Sower, which is, I think is a two-book series called Earthseed. Uh, this is another one that, uh, I think this is actually historical fiction sci-fi no it's sci-fi it's like a dystopia if i'm in the mood for some like dystopian sci-fi i'll read this if i'm not in the mood for that i won't i have heard octalia buckler is just an extraordinarily good writer so we shall see next up i'm not going to try and pronounce the name of this series but it's got two books it's got a memory called empire and a desolation called peace i think i'm not gonna lie uh this was this was a cover by i think this cover is sick I think that I really like the titles. Um, that's why I bought it. Uh, I have heard, I've heard it's like an extremely clever sci-fi story. Man, like what a cover. I just really like that cover. That's, that's why I bought it. I think um, some people I know might end up reading it in 2022. If they do, I'll probably join in with them. Hi Dylan, if you're watching this, what's up? And last but not least, and again, the people who are good at math can be like, what do you mean last? You're not close to 52 books. Well, last is Shadows of the Apt by Adrian Tchaikovsky, which is a 10 book series. And they're not particularly short books. I can almost guarantee I will not be reading the entirety of Shadows of the Apt, but I think there is an excellent, excellent, excellent chance that I start Shadows of the Apt and especially read The Empire of Black and Gold, which uh, it's got like societies that are based off insects. They're not literally insects, which I think is just cheating for me, get me to hate your antagonist because the Empire of Black and Gold is like the wasp empire, which are the bad guys. And I hate wasps. I'm, I don't know the name of the phobia, but I probably have like, I'm scared of wasps. People are scared of spiders. I don't get it. Spiders, there's one of them and you can just walk away from it. Wasps, there's a lot of them, and they can fly. That's also just because I live in Canada, and the spiders here are harmless. While the wasps, there will be lots of them. They're just bastards. Like, they don't even care if you mess with them. They just come up. They just want to call... They just want to minimize joy in the universe. And they can swarm you. Eh, anyways. Yes, sir, there are some types of wasps that... If there is a wasp swarm chasing you, and you jump underwater, they will wait above the water for you to come up and sting them. That's right, they're way worse than spiders. So I already, I haven't even read the book and I already hate the antagonist with a passion. So it's got that going for it. But those are the books I might read in 2022, maybe, we'll see. I'll probably read about half of them would be my guess. Then there's a smaller pile, which is books I'm, I own, but I'm almost certain. I decided not to cover these just because there are too many of them and this video is way too long. Also, I am also going to read The Last Unicorn. I just don't own it. But I need to buy it because it's going to be a book read for the book club. But we're not going to worry about the books I'm not going to read. We're skipping this last pile. So 
2022 is a ridiculously stacked year in terms of new releases, especially there are some potential releases that could happen that would make it an even more stacked year. And the first one is I've already mentioned is there's going to be a new Guy Gavril K book, All the Seas of the World, that I will be reading on release date. The other big one is there is going to be two new Sun Eater books by Christopher Rocchio. One of those will be Kingdoms of Death, and then the other, the title, has not been uh, told to us mere mortals. Uh, it is, it is, I don't even know if it's confirmed. I think there is, he, uh, I think the author does have a working title. He just, it hasn't been confirmed yet that that's actually going to be the title. So he's just waiting to release it. Um, Sun Eater, obviously I've read three books. I think they're all fantastic. Demon in White was one of my favorite books of the year for 2021. It is going to be very high on my top book list. As you will see, the series keeps getting better. I don't know how he's going to top Demon in White. Demon in White is one of like the most I can't come up, think of a way to criticize it. Like, I don't even know what you would criticize about it, which is why if you look at the Goodreads ratings, there's there's very few negative reviews. It's so good. I'm so excited for Kingdoms of Death. I just want to know what the first damn word of the book is. All his books start with first word, and I've been trying to guess the first word, uh, but I haven't gotten it yet. So I'm extremely excited about those. And another one I'm, of course, extremely excited about is there's a potential to have two new Jim Butcher books. Uh, the... We should get the Olympian Affair almost for sure. Not maybe not for sure, but it. we should basically certainly get the Olympian Affair, which is book two to the Cinder Sire series, which means I will probably reread the Aeronauts Windless. The Aeronauts Windless is not as good as late Dresden books or the late Alara books. I think you won't find many people who've read all his books who disagree with that. However, I think it is his strongest first book in a series by a pretty comfortable margin. Jim Butcher is, of course... Probably the closest thing I have to an autobi author. He's not my favorite authors, but my other favorite authors have books I haven't read by them. So it feels like I can't claim they're autobi authors. Like, you know, Brandon has a bunch of stuff I haven't read. Robin Hobb has a bunch of stuff I haven't read. Uh, Rocky only has three books. Evan Winter only has two books. I guess I own all Guy Gavril K's books. Uh, but Jim Butcher, uh, I think he's released 22 books, and I've read all of them at least twice. And I... If Jim Butcher releases a book, I'll buy it. I'm not going to look at the premise. I'll buy it, and I'll read it on release date. The man is on a ridiculous streak of consistency for me. I think the last time I read a Jim Butcher book that I gave less than 8 out of 10 was Furies of Cauldron. So I think he's on a 17-book streak of at least 8 out of 10. Just maddening consistency. And we also might get 12 months uh, if he's particularly productive. Uh, he has. He said a while ago that he was hoping to finish 12 months in early 2021. I don't know how long the publishing is going to take. I know there's paper shortages. So it's possible we get the next Dresden entry, which of course, shoot, like Dresden entry, I'll, I'll book the day off work. I'll probably get a bunch of school stuff done so I can just do nothing that day except read 12 months. I'll, I'll, I'll finish 12 months the day 12 months comes out. Like, that's happening. And we aren't even done because... There is obviously going to be a new Brandon Sanderson book. There will be the long-awaited conclusion to Mistborn Era 2 that I think I've been waiting for for six years. I basically read Bands of Mourning on the day it was released, and that will be The Lost Metal, which will finish the quartet of Mistborn Era 2. I would say I don't like Mistborn Era 2 as much as like Stormlight or Mistborn Era 1, but I still really like Mistborn Era 2. I like the characters. I like the setting. The plots are amazing. It really... Brandon is kind of mean to his characters there, and there's some really, really good stuff. So I am going to be rereading Mistborn Era 1 and 2 leading up to the release of The Lost Metal release. This one I think is a maybe. I don't think it's confirmed. We do have a title, which is The Lord of Demons by Evan Winter, uh, which is book three of The Burning Quartet. The Burning is obviously a series that only has two books, and I absolutely love the ever-loving crap out of both of them. Uh, so this is one that I'm incredibly excited for. I think Evan Winter's improvement as a writer was extremely noticeable from The Rage of Dragons to The Fire of Vengeance, and I already thought it was unfair he was, how good he was as a storyteller in The Rage of Dragons. I obviously, I, I love those books. I, I'm addicted to them. I can't put them down, and I'm emotionally invested in them. So that one I don't know if we're actually going to get. And then, you know, there are the standard ones that could happen. We could get The Thorn of Ember Lane by Scott Lynch. Uh, we could get The Winds of Winter by George R. R. Martin. We could get The Doors of Stone by Patrick Rothfuss. We're probably going to get none of these. If we get them, obviously I will read them. I just, I'm not particularly optimistic about those. But we're almost done with new releases. I think the last new release is there's going to be The Hunger of the Gods by John Gwynn. 
the sequel to The Shadow of the Gods by John Gwynn. John Gwynn has two series so far, and he kind of has a reputation of first books that are maybe a little bit slow, and then as soon as you get to the second book in John Gwynn series, it just takes off, unless your name is Pranav, who gave Ruin one star, which is hostile. Um, but Hunger Gods, uh, actually a book I probably won't be reading on release date for the simple reason that the covers are so nice that I want to get the hard covers. And at least for Shadow of the Gods, the only way to get a hardcover right away was from Book Depository, which means I'm probably going to get the book a couple weeks late, but I'll read it when I have it. And that, so we've got a pretty stacked, stacked display of new releases this year, which means we only have one more section left, which is my five star predictions of which I will make five. And I'm going to try and do better than getting one out of five this year, damn it. I'm actually doing the same thing I did last year where I said I was about to talk about my five-star predictions and then I proceeded to not talk about five-star predictions. But first, rereads, which is something I didn't mention. And for those of you who have been around for a year or and also have a really good memory, you'd have to have a really good memory because, you know, my random video from a year ago is probably not that important in your life. Uh, you may have remembered that last year, my reading plans, I specifically planned out the rereads. And this year, I haven't. Uh, I have decided that for rereads, I'm going to just be a mood reader. Um, I also just noticed for the camera, you can't see my new copy of Lord of the Rings. Hey, Lord of the Rings. Um, for rereads, I'm just going to read whatever the hell I'm in the mood to read. I'm probably going to continue with some Robin Hobb stuff. I'm going to continue with The Wheel of Time, but I'm not going to plan out when, if I feel like rereading something, I'm just going to do it. It's what I did started doing late here. I think what happens when I plan of rereads I get in the mood to reread something then I'm like all right I'm gonna reread that here and then that's like six months later and then by the time I get six months later I'm no longer excited for that reread so if I want to reread something I'm just gonna do it uh, I may end up rereading Song of Ice and Fire I think I'm gonna reread The Lord of the Rings um Stormlight is always likely but yeah rereads I'm just gonna do whenever I feel about it yeah so now we're getting into five star predictions of which I will have five so last year for this I kept it like varied I picked all different authors. This time I'm playing the odds. This time I don't want to get one out of five again. I want to get five out of five. So I'm picking the five books that maximize my chances, which means unfortunately, as much as I want to, because I want it really, it's the book I most want to be a five stars. I am not picking Two Green Angel Tower, even though I really want to pick Two Green Angel Tower. But I've read 20 pages of the author. It's not the safe pick. So my first pick and probably the most safe pick is... <clears throat> Lord of Emperors by Guy Gavril Kay, which is the second book in uh, the Serentine mosaic. Uh, Guy Gavril Kay, obviously, already has gotten five stars with The Lines of Arizal and came extremely close with Tigana. I know of the two other people I talked to who have read a lot of or basically all of Guy Gavril Kay. That's uh, the Fantasy Babble, who you'll see in the comment section of a lot of my videos. Great dude. And Christopher Rocchio, the author of The Sun Eater. Serentium is both of their favorites, and I think Lord of Emperors is both of their favorites. And Nicholas Ames, who uh, wrote Kings of the Wild and Bloody Rose, uh, his favorite author is Guy Gavril K, and his favorite Guy Gavril K book is Lord of Emperors. So, Lord of Emperors is probably the safest five-star pick. I think this is uh, probably the only book I'm reading for the first time in 2022 that has, like, a better than 50% chance of being uh, above 9.5 out of 10. Okay, next up. Next safest pick. Dresden Files. One of my favorite series of all time. I just realized this book might not come out. Okay, um, quick. If if this if 12 months comes out, I'm picking 12 months. Um, and if, if 12 months doesn't come out and Lord of Demons comes out by Evan Winter, I'm picking Lord of Demons. If Lord of Demons doesn't come out, then I'll talk about it that later. Um, but if the 12 months comes out, I'm picking 12 months. Jim Butcher has continually improved as an author of his last like five books. Basic, almost all of them, or a lot of them, have come very close to being five stars or have been five stars. I think the premise of the next book uh, could be amazing. It's going to be a much more like character focused, relationship focused book, which I think right now is that's where Jim is at his best because that is the thing he has continually improved at the most. So I'm pr picking 12 months, but I think if this book doesn't come out, it's unfair to hold me to that. So if 12 months doesn't come out, my backup pick will be The Lord of Demons by Evan Winter, which will be book three in The Burning. And if that doesn't come out, I have another backup pick because the next book I have is, I'm specifically first, no matter what happens with the new releases, I'm taking book five 
of the Sun Eater. We're getting two Sun Eater books in 2022. We're getting Kingdoms of Death, and then we're getting a book after Kingdoms of Death. Originally, it was one book, and I'm basically, what I'm thinking is, the second half of a book is usually better than the first. So I'm expecting both to be straight fire, but I'm predicting book five will be even better than book four. So I'm taking book five. Actually, that one also has probably like a better than even chance of being 9.5 out of 10. And then as my backup to Lord of Demons, if neither Lord of Demons nor 12 Months comes out, I'm picking book four of the Sun Eater, Kingdoms of Death, which will be coming out in March. That one will be coming out for sure. It is out of the author's hands. Rockio has done everything on it. And that I'm so excited for Kingdoms of Death. Can he maintain the upward trend? Can he continue to improve? He has, I think, I think Demons of White is firmly better than Howling Dark. And I think Howling Dark is firmly better than Empire of Silence, basically in every way. So we'll see if he's able to continue that. And if Kingdoms of Death can get the five stars. Uh, and then... For my last pick, so that is four we have so far with some backups because I think it's unfair to count it against me if a book doesn't come out. Uh, but the last one, I'm just, I'm sticking to the same authors. I'm playing it safe. We're going with River of Stars by Mr. Guy Gabriel K. And actually, I think I was wrong before. I think this is Nicholas Ames' favorite book of all time. Uh, and this is his other duology. This is, uh, the first book is Under Heaven and this is River of Stars. It's the one that's based on ancient China. Um, this, well, uh, Serantium was based on the Byzantine Empire, and I'm just picking it because I've heard the, a lot of people have read Guy Gavril K say he's at his absolute best in duologies, so I'm picking book two of both duologies because Guy Gavril K endings tend to be particularly fantastic. Every ending to a series, whether it be standalone or like every ending to a story he's had has been incredible, so I'm going with the ending of those because worst comes to worst, they're written by Guy Gavril K., and they have a Guy Gavriel K ending. So my four predictions that will definitely uh, be books that are available to read are Lo uh, Lord of Emperor. What is it? Lord of Emperors. Terrible title, but whatever. Lord of Emperors by Guy Gavriel K. River of Stars by Guy Gavriel K. And Book Five of The Sun Eater. And then if if it's available, Twelve Months by Jim Butcher. If that isn't available, then Lord of Demons by Evan Winter. And if that isn't available, then Kingdoms of Death by Christopher Rocchio. Editing me here, I had some very suspicious math there. So if neither of the new Dresden release or the new Burning release comes out, then that leaves me with only four books. And for the fifth book, if neither of those come out, I'm taking Two Green Angel Tower by Mr. Tad Williams as my backup. Although, if I have that as one of my options, I'll be a bit sad, because it means I didn't get a new Dresden book, or a new The Burning book. Hopefully we get both, and I can just have 12 months as my fifth choice. Uh, watch to Green Angel Tower end up easily being a five stars, and none of these end. Then, if that happens, Jimmy Nuts, who, if he's watching this, can tell me that I'm wrong, and that I should have picked two Green Angel Tower. And I'm sure if Addie LaRue gets five stars, then... Gazzy will tell me that I was wrong and foolish, but whatever. Those were I'm picking. I don't want to get one out of five. I like my chances. I want at least two or three out of five. We'll see. Anyways, that is my goals, predictions, and reflections going into 2022.